can you share how we start to get an attunement or start to get on this stairway? Well, I mean, the stairway is is a meditation early in the book, and they talk, and they the guides do the stairway or a version of a stairway meditation frequently when they're attuning groups of people. But I'll explain what the attunements are first, because every book is and has at least one attunement that they work with. The guides work with um, language, and they say the language that they work with is encoded. And that the, the, the speaking of, the intonation of, the, the claim of the language itself is the attunement. So if you've ever been attuned to Reiki and your teacher held your hands, it was a transfer of energy and you can understand that. The guides are actually attuning through the language that they work with and the reading of the text is enough to attune. You don't need me, thank God, in person to do it. The guides say we're all radios. We're always in broadcast. Our broadcast is our consciousness. But we're only playing the broadcast that we've known, that we've been instructed in, in participate, participating in. So what they're doing is they're tuning the radios that we are to play the higher broadcast that they say is always here, has always been here. We've basically just been in ignorance of it. So that's the general description of attunement. Gotcha. The prior attunements that they've worked with, and one of them is I know who I am in truth, I know what I am in truth, I know how I serve in truth, yeah. I am free, I am free, I am free, is speaking to several things. Identity, I know who I am. Form, matter, I know what I am. And service, which is, they say, expression. How one serves is how one is most fully expressed as the true self. The claim, I am free, I am free, I am free, which was the focus of the Book of Freedom, which was the last the last series, is in some ways, they say, the equivalent of putting a fist through the false ceiling of agreement that we've all been operating with of what is possible. And my understanding is what exists beyond that false ceiling is the next octave. The guides say any piece of music can be played in multiple octaves. Any song, any note can be played in the octave above it. What they're doing with us in this process, if I'm correct, is, what's the word? It's um, transposing the song, the tone that we are to be played in a higher. And that's the process of ascension. The guides I work with don't talk about dimensions. I know I'm sure many of your guests do. They may have used that word once or twice in 10 years through me, but they use the language of music. And maybe it's because I failed science and just can't go there. I'll just shut up if I start to hear it. So the idea of being transposed or transposing the reality is what happens when you align to the upper room. The claim, I am free, I am free, I am free, I've been told can take you there. But what they often do is they work with the simple claim, um, I am in the upper room. So if you want, and you can do this, and I don't know if your, your listeners will get this, but they may say, I guess, but God's just saying, say it. Yeah, so just say it after me. I know who I am in truth. I know who I am in truth. I know what I am in truth. I know what I am in truth. I know how I serve in truth. I know how I serve in truth. I am free, I am free, I am free. I am free, I am free, I am free. You're saying now you may say this if you wish. From I am in the upper room. I am in the upper room. Good. And they're saying you are in the upper room. So they're agreeing to it, to that level of alignment. Now, when you hang out here in the upper room, one of the first things that you'll find is that you're in the moment, you're in the eternal now, because they say that is the upper room. Past and future ideas in the present time is when we can know. It's the only time we can know anything. The other thing that people discover very quickly is you're not afraid. There's no fear at this level of alignment. If you want to go back and learn through fear, they say you can, but you have to go back downstairs. And I go back downstairs 27 times a day because that's where I'm used to hanging out. So the attunement to the upper room, it really is, I'll explain it this way. The guys for years have been talking about a chord, A-C-C-O-R-D or A-C-H-O-R-D, as they say, on a piano. And I got so sick of hearing that I didn't know what it meant. What it means is 
these individual claims, I know who I am, I know what I am, I know how I serve, I am free, are all notes. They're all notes that are played in the energetic field, and that's what the agreement does. When all of those notes are played in tandem at once at a level of realization, you're actually at a whole other level of alignment, and that's the claim that they teach in Beyond the Known, I have come, I have come, I have come which is the manifestation of the divine in form. And it's the energetic self that's realizing this, not the personality self. The personality self is still present, but my understanding is it's moved to a sort of rightful position. It's no longer commandeering, you know, the ship. Thank you. So if we, um, if I was to ask about how we release fear, releasing fear is simply to get in attunement? No, I don't think it's about that. I think it's about aligning to a level where fear is not present. Mm -hmm. That's the difference. So here's the example. Say I've lived on my fifth floor apartment for 25 years. And in the fifth floor apartment are the scrapbooks and the photo albums, my ex's clothing that's still in the back of the closet, the ashes of my dead cat, Everything that I've known myself through exists on the fifth floor. And imagine suddenly an apartment opens up on the 10th floor. And you go up to the 10th floor, but suddenly you realize you can't live without your ex's coat in the closet or your cat's ashes or the photo albums. We go back downstairs to what we've known because it's how we've known ourselves. So the gods say that, you know, the upper room is a place without fear, but fear is a teacher. And if we wish to learn through that, we can. But we have to go back downstairs to do it. There are simple ways, because they talk about fear as a level of vibration, you know. And if I say I'm afraid, I am claiming my alignment to fear. And the gods say again and again and again in their books, the action of fear is to claim more fear. And every choice you have made probably got you more of the same. Every choice you do make will. So you're always being invited to fear. And the simple answer here is to say no. And you can do that from the upper room. It's not as easy to do it when you're invited to fear. And the guides say, you know, fear is, you know, here's what they say. They say everything that you see, you're in agreement to. You're shaking hands with. When you shake hands with, you hold. If you don't like it, stop agreeing to it. Stop holding it. That's the only way that you can receive the higher. So there's there's a riddle. Thank you for sharing. There's a riddle within a conundrum here, mm-hmm. and and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to we'll go to climate because my my wife and I just came back from a uh, American Renewable Energy Day weekend, a symposium on this. How do you create change without affirming that which is or was? It's not about not affirming it. It's, again, not about denial. If I'm, I'm just going to throw this out. I, I don't know if this example will work, and it's me, and I should let the guys take this stuff. If I'm in an abusive relationship, yeah. I yeah. leave the abusive relationship. I still have the opportunity to re-know the partner as of God. If I want to put the partner in hell, I'm calling myself back there to him. It doesn't mean I have to be in bed with a person. It doesn't mean I have to hang out with them. But you have the right to make the change based on the evidence that you see. That is the opportunity of the evidence, is to act upon it. It's how we respond to this stuff that I think makes the difference. I I can't speak to this lecture now because I haven't listened to it for a long time, and I expect that there are things in the book that sort of agree to this. But there's a a lecture that's up on YouTube, and I was... um, It's called How to Deal with an Atrocity. And it was delivered um, in a workshop in Calgary, Alberta, when I had been channeling all day Saturday and woke up Sunday morning to the news of the Pulse nightclub shooting in Orlando, Florida. And I had to go channel. And there was no way around it. And they did address it. They didn't address it by name, but they certainly addressed how we as conscious beings confirm you know, and respond to in, in productive ways those things we see that we decide cannot be of God, you know, um, because the process, again, is lifting what we see to a new potential, not affirming the negativity, because affirming the negativity just tends to get us more of the same. So I don't think any of this is about ignoring climate change or ignoring 
any challenge. It's about re-seeing it and re-knowing it and hopefully, you know, claiming a higher potential for it. Now that I've said that, let me go to the guides and probably tell me say everything that I just said was just wrong. They just said not all of it, only about 25%, only about 25%. In fact, we're going to you now. In fact, you are participating in the reality you see now. You're all agreeing that it's there. You're all agreeing that it's there. And consequently, consciousness you hold. And consequently, the consciousness you hold is contributing to it, is contributing to it, to deny God in anything, to deny God in everything. Anything is to act in fear, is to act in fear, to realize God in all things, to realize God in all things, just to see things my way, is to see things in a higher way and claim the object of sight and claim the object of sight, be it a fire, be it a fire, be it anything, be it anything as of source, as of source, will be renowned in a higher way, so that it may be renowned in a higher way. An answer may come there. An answer may come there that will not come through fear, that will not come through fear. Fear invites you to kill the ex-lover. Fear invites you to kill the ex-lover, to build a wall between countries, to build a wall between countries, to deny the divine and those people over there because they're capable of harming you, because they are capable of of harming you. You've been doing this for too long. You have been doing this for too long to re-know anything. To re-know anything is to release the ideas of what is, is to release the ideas of what is, so it may be re so it may be re You are quick to condemn. You are quick to condemn, to blame, to blame, to deny God in anyone, anything, to deny God in anyone or anything, which keeps you in the strata, which keeps you in the strata, fear of fear, know it or not, know it or not. Beautiful. Thank you. And, and thank you to the guides. I, I love the concept, not concept. I love the beingness of claiming everything as source, everything as God, everything as love. Well, that's what they've said, you know, and it's challenging for me. The last three books, inclusive of, of realization, Began, you know, address form. When they first started addressing form, as of God, I was challenged. But they say you come from this paradigm where if there is a God, it's in the clouds and you're stuck here in the mud in separation. And, you know, they say the interesting thing is, and the true thing is, that God is the mud. It's also your skin and the feces and the sky and the dirt and the rain and the beauty and what you would call the ugly. It's all things. You don't really get to pick and choose. I think in the New Age, sometimes everybody thinks that it's supposed to have a bow on it and a unicorn and a crystal. And I don't think that that's true. It's all things. You can't really claim. I, here's the simple teaching. If I deny that God in the body that I have, and I have all these issues with the body that I have, I'm also denying God by proxy to the tree out the window and the ocean. See, it's all things. It must be present. The interesting thing is when you begin to work with this, there's a tangible response. And I'm, you know, I was raised an atheist and I don't, I'm not very woo-woo myself. But if you stand in front of someone and you make the claim, I know what you are in truth, mm -hmm. um, and the guides often do this, you can usually feel the energy come back to you from the other person. It comes in waves. The guides call it the echo in their books. Um, and when you do this at a larger scale, you're realizing the inherent divine and the what of anything. The guide's saying what you're doing is alchemy. You're actually lifting what is seen to its true nature. The rock, they say, has always been holy. You just denied the inherent holiness in it. And so your relationship to it is different. So can we, this is, this is brilliant. Can we, do we have the, and I'll use this, this touchy word deliberately, do we have the power to help shift others or to help others recognize their true self? Yes, is what I hear. Now, I mean, I, everything that the guides have said has been in respect of the free will of the individual. So you're not dragging anybody up the mountain by their hair or not pulling somebody to the light who doesn't want to go there. What you're doing, because you're operating from the level of agreement where the light is all that is, you're claiming the light that already is in the other person. Do you understand that? Do. You can't make God appear, but you can claim the inherent divine. So the claim, I know who you are in truth, 
I know what you are in truth. I know how you serve in truth. You are free, you are free, you are free. The guides say is always true. At the level of the true self, which is the level they speak to and from, you do know who you are, you know what you are, and you know how you express. In fact, you, how could you be anything other than free? The decree or the claim made on the behalf of another will lift them, and you can actually work with this and feel it. You're not getting them to agree with you intellectually. You're getting them to agree with you at a level of vibrational accord by claiming what is always so. Thank you. How would you define that? Because you're saying this is alchemy. How do you define alchemy? I don't even know if I do, and they do in the book that's not even out yet. And I've been so focused on the one that just came out because I've been having to talk about it. Um, I don't know the rearticulation of form. The rearticulation of form in a higher octave, in a higher octave is alchemy, is alchemy, Lewis Lindbergh. The realization of spirit where it has been denied, where it has been denied, Zephyr is an alchemical act that recreates, that recreates and transposes a reality and transposes a reality to a higher vibrational agreement, to a higher vibrational agreement. It is manifestation. It is manifestation of the divine of the divine as may be known as may be renowned renowned by the one by the one who has claimed his true inheritance who has claimed his true inheritance your true inheritance your true inheritance we have to say we have to say is the kingdom is the kingdom and the kingdom's relation and the kingdom is the realization of the divine all things of the divine in all things period interesting period thank you how do we share this with our kids Know who they are, you know, know who they are. I mean, that's what the guides love them anyway. Know who they are. Let me go to see if the guides want to say you're sharing it by being. They're saying you're sharing it by being. It's a teaching of being. It's a teaching of being, the escalation of your own field. The escalation of your own field lifts what you see, lifts what you see through vibrational accord, through vibrational accord to what we call the upper room, to what we call the upper room. Your children are there already. Your children are there already in a higher octave in a higher octave once they know, once they know that that is who they have always been, once they know that that is who they have always been. You're not codifying behavior. You're not codifying behavior. You're not reading the scripture. You are not reading them scripture as we know the inherent divine. You are simply knowing the inherent divine that's expressed your child that is expressed as your child, period, period, period. Thank you. Couple last questions, then we'll let you get some much needed rest here, Paul, and thank you for taking this time with me. How do we forgive ourselves? Oh, brother. You know, let me go to them. I mean, I've had so many lessons in this in the last four or five months. So many lessons in this. And I suppose I'll still continue to get them. The first thing I hear is knowing that there is nothing to forgive. You have a right to be. You have a right to be and a right to be known and loved and a right to be known and loved regardless of what you've seen and done. Regardless of what you have seen and done, believe you have seen or done, believe you have seen or done or been accused of seeing or, doing, or been accused of seeing or doing. The divine is still present. The divine is still present. It does not judge it does not judge. It is you who judge. It is you who judge for being fearful through your agreement to be fearful, to forgive the self. To forgive the self is to allow the self to be, is to allow the self to be without self recrimination, without self recrimination, without the edicts of fear, without the edicts of fear. This does not mean, this does not mean you're not accountable to your acts. You are not accountable to your acts. Of course, indeed you are. Of course, indeed you are. But even those may be renowned. But even those may be renowned from the upper room, from the upper room where all things are indeed made new, where all things are indeed made new, period. And they're saying period. Thank you. Going along those lines, loneliness. We're a generation. We're a people feeling lonelier than ever. You know, not they talk about this. It's interesting. I, you know, certainly have my battles with that. Let me see what they want to say. Well, basically, all loneliness is, they say, or saying is the forgetting God that you are with God and can only be with God, and can only be with God. Again, it's the denial of God. Again, it's the denial of God and its presence, and its presence as all things, 
as all things that keeps you in fear, that keeps you in fear. Now God is in people. Now God is in people, in nature, in nature, in all manifestation, in all manifestation. But you've claimed a world, but you've claimed a world in deep separation, in deep separation from one another, from one another, and consequently from your source as well, and consequently from your source as well, from one another, to know the divine in another, regardless of what he or she presents as regardless of what he or she presents as, in fact, lifts you both, in fact, lifts you both to a commonality, to a commonality, a communion, if wish, a communion, if you wish, that is always present, that is always present, but you must claim it, but you must claim it, or as long as you say, you are alone as you say it, as you agree to it, and as you agree to it. In fact, you are not separate from your brother. In fact, you are not separate from your brother or your source or your source. You've just agreed to that concept. You've just agreed to that concept and made it manifest and made it manifest, period. And we're saying period. Thank you. Where can people go, Paul, to find your beautiful work, the guide's beautiful work, and to find out more? Well, my website, which is just my name, it's Paul Selig, S E L I G dot com. It's got there's workshops all over the world, and you know the guides are teaching, and I'm sitting there trying to mind my piece so I don't put my foot in the mouth like I I may have here, but they're pretty good once they get going. And um, yeah, my website has a calendar, and I do live streams on Wednesday nights, and you know they're teaching there as well. Is there something you're most excited about? I know you're 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 you've been going nonstop, but is there something that's I'm right now excited about what may be next, and even though that's projecting into the future, I'm having some strange hope lately. I'm, you know, one of those glass half empty guys, you know. I I was raised to be fearful and I was very good at being fearful and I'm moving out of that I suspect finally so I'm very hopeful about what's next in my experience and I don't seem to be waiting for the other shoe to drop which has you know been part of my character makeup for a long time so I'm excited about how this group this work is, is seems to be growing and there are all these young people finding it now, which is a great, sort of great joy. I was a college teacher for 25 years, and I miss the 20-somethings, you know. So now I'm seeing them in the workshops and in the classes, and that's great fun for me. But I'm excited about what can and will be at this level, um, because it's a different way of being, I do have to say it. Woohoo! Thank you so, so much, Paul. Any last words of wisdom you want to share? It's from the guides. They're saying, trust your life to teach you what you need to know, what you need to know. Your life is the classroom. Your life is the classroom and the teacher both, and the teacher both. Your life does require. Your life will give you the lessons you require. Trust this and all as well. Trust this and all as well. Okay? That works for me. <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Paul. It has been an honor, a pleasure, and thank you to the guides as well. Um, support you so much in your work. I know you've been burning the candle on both ends. The books are truly magnificent and I think needed today more than ever. Thank you so much. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get beyond the known realization, and begin realizing your own new reality today and shine bright. Woohoo! I just had the most phenomenal time talking with Paul Selig and the guides. To check out more from Paul and the guides, be sure to click here, subscribe below.